My dear friends, thank you all for being here tonight. It's great to be in Texas, the Lone Star State. The one star in the Texan flag represents all the free Western world needs today. Defiance, pride, and independence. Thank you, Texas. And of course, it is no coincidence that we are in Garland, Texas tonight. It is here that three months ago, shortly after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, Islamic activists convened to demand that free speech be curtailed. They want to prohibit cartoons, books, and films which they found insulting. And our answer is, don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with the free West and don't mess with our freedom of speech. My friends, allow me to thank Pamela Geller for organizing this exhibition. Pamela is an extraordinary woman. I only have a few heroes in my life, but Pamela is certainly one of them. Let us give her a big applause. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. My friends, actually, you are all winners. Everybody present here tonight deserves respect just for being here. The cartoonists, the participants in this Mohammed contest, all did fantastic work. And all of you are not only talented, but also very brave. For Islam has put a death sentence on depicting Mohammed. But this has not frightened you. And even if it did, it has not stopped you. Because you believe in the freedom of speech, and I applaud you for that. Thank you so much. However, there can only be one winner of the contest, and that is, as you already know, Bosch Forsten. And Bosch, Bosch knows what he is talking about, and what he's cartooning about, being a former, of in his own words, recovered Muslim. <laughs> I know the fantastic word of Bosch, who, by the way, also created the anti-jihad superhero Pigman. I already know him for many, his work for many years, and I want to congratulate him, not only for his brave and excellent work, but also for winning the contest today. Congratulations, Bosch. Your statement, my statement, the statement of every single person present in this room here tonight is very clear. We will never allow barbarism. We will never allow Islam to rob us of our freedom of speech. Never. And I know from my own experience how dangerous it is to stand for freedom. I know how dangerous it is to speak the truth about Islam. I am on death list from Al-Qaeda, from the Pakistani Taliban, from terrorists from the Islamic State, only because I tell people the truth about Islam. And the truth is, my dear friends, that Islam has declared war on us, on our Judeo-Christian civilization. Islam wants to rob us of our freedoms and liberties. And let me tell you, Islam and freedom are totally incompatible. 
I'm a politician, but cartoonist, like my good friends, the Danish cartoonist Kurt Westergaard, the Swedish artist Lars Vilks, are also on death list. Both have already been the victims of murder attempts. And another man on this Al-Qaeda list was the cartoonist Chab, editor of the French magazine Charlie Hebdo. And as we all know, he and nine of his colleagues were murdered last January in Paris by followers of the religion of hate. According to Sharia law, they were all guilty of the same crime. The crime of depicting Mohammed. The crime of defaming the so-called prophet of Islam. A crime punishable by death, by the religion of death. And in order to show them that we will not, that we will not have Islam dictate the law, we are here with an exhibition of Mohammed cartoons. We are here in defiance of Islam. We are here to defend our rights and stand for freedom of speech. That is our duty today. As Ronald Reagan, I believe your greatest president ever, As Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. And I am happy, I am happy that nobody died while watching these cartoons. And this proves that unlike jihadis, cartoons do not kill people. <laughs> cartoons, cartoons do not kill jihadis, but jihadis kill cartoonists. And that is a huge difference which we should never forget. My friends, Huntington was wrong. It is not a clash between civilization. It's a clash between a civilization and pure barbarism. That is what we are dealing with. And a lot of politicians around the world are afraid to say, and I'm proud to say, that our culture, our Judeo-Christian culture, is far superior than the Islamic one. I can give you a million reasons, but here is an important one. We have got humor, and they don't. There really is no humor in Islam. And in 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini devoted an entire radio broadcast to this topic. Allah did not create man so that he could have fun, the Ayatollah said. There are no jokes in Islam, he said on the radio address. There is no humor and no fun in Islam. And for once, the Ayatollah was right. Islam does not allow free speech because free speech shows how evil and wrong Islam is. And Islam does not allow humor because humor shows how foolish and ridiculous it really is. My friends, you are extremely fortunate to live in America because you have a First Amendment. In Europe, it's not just the jihadis who go after you. The authorities do so too. In the Netherlands, I have been dragged to court on hate speech charges for speaking the truth about Islam. I was acquitted, but now the authorities want to prosecute me again. And we, the people who criticize Islam, are harassed. But the sympathizers, the sympathizers of the Islamic State, they are left in peace. Last summer, they took the streets in my hometown of The Hague. They carried even swastikas. They carried black ISIS flags. They shouted death 
to the Jews. And you know what? The authorities did nothing. As a matter of fact, we have weak leaders. Weak leaders, appeasers, are ruling the Netherlands, Europe, and if I may say so, even the United States of America. And we have to turn the tide. And we will turn the tide. New leadership, new leadership is what we need to defend our freedom of speech and resist the ongoing Islamization of the West. Today, many of our Western leaders want us to shut up. When we tell the truth about Islam, they call it Islamophobia. When cartoonists make drawings of Muhammad, they are accused of provoking people. A few years ago, in my country, the Netherlands, the police even raided a house of a cartoonist. And in his address to the United Nations in 2012, your own President Obama said, and I quote, the future, the future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. But we say the future must not belong to the Islam. Do you hear it, Mr. Obama? We say no to Islam. Yeah. Unlike President Obama and his European colleagues, we are not willing to sign away our freedom and independence. The day we give away humor and freedom of speech is the day that we cease to exist as a free and independent people. And that day, I promise you, with your help, that day will never come. And that is what this exhibition is all about. From here, we sent a clear message to President Obama and all his colleagues. We will never submit. We are not intimidated by Islam. And sure, we will, not pick, we will not be picking up swords and axes and breaking into people's homes. But we will not, we will not remain silent either. Moderation, moderation in the face of evil is evil itself. And this is not what our age needs. We must uncap our pants. We must speak words of truth. We are facing, unfortunately, an enemy who is striving through all means to destroy the West and snuff out our traditions of free thought, free speech, and our Judeo-Christian values. And my friends, make no mistake. If we fail, we will be enslaved. So the only option, the only option we have is to defend our freedom with all the energy we have. It is time to be brave. It is time to do our duty. So instead of giving in to fear and adopt the Islamic taboo on depicting Muhammad, I propose that we draw another conclusion. Lift the cause of the fear. Let us de-Islamize our societies. No more Islam, no more mosques, no more Islamic schools. It's time for our own, our own heritage. Let us liberate ourselves from this tyranny. And that's another good reason why we are having this exhibition here today. Depicting Muhammad is an act of liberation. And let us hold similar exhibitions all over the world, from Canada to Australia to Europe. We need a Pamela Geller everywhere in the world. I invite all the cartoonists to come to the Netherlands 
with this exhibition. I will help you exhibit, exhibit these cartoons in the Dutch Parliament building. For we have to signal that we will never, never allow Islam to restrict our freedom. And we have to show them that we will never bow in the direction of Mecca. My friends, I'm not saying that there are no moderate Muslims. Fortunately, there are Muslims who do not live according to the Islamic commands. But there is no moderate Islam. Not all Muslims are terrorists. Not all Muslims are terrorists, but most terrorists are Muslims today. And that is why we say, the less Islam, the better. My friends, the Islamic creed obliges one and a half billion people around the world to take Muhammad as their example. And you know, Muhammad led a gang of robbers who looted who raped, who killed thousands of people. And historic sources describe orgies of inhumanity. And an example is the genocide of the Jews of Medina in the year 627. And one of the head choppers himself was Mohammed. Mohammed himself confronted with the lunacy of the Islamic terrorists that we see today on our television screens, every day, it is not hard to find out whom they get their inspiration from. It was Mohammed who, as a matter of fact, and we have to be honest and tell the truth, was a warlord, a murderer, and a pedophile. <laughs> My friends, there is no turning back once one has become a Muslim. For even though Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that every person has the right to change his religion of belief, in Islam there is only the death penalty for leaving the faith. So let us expose Muhammad. Let us show the world what Islam truly is. Let us support Muslims like Bosch who wish to leave Islam and liberate themselves from the fear. Apostates are heroes, and more than ever, they deserve the support of freedom-loving people all over the world. Mohammed, Mohammed fought and terrorized people with the sword. Today, here in Garland, we fight Mohammed and his followers with the pen. And the pen, the drawings, will prove mightier than the sword. Yeah. <laughs> Mohammed's followers fight us with blood baths. But today here in Garland, we fight them with humor. Because blood baths enslave while humor liberates. Right. Yeah. Let me end my speech, my dear friends, by quoting Sam Houston. The founding father, the founding father of this great state of Texas. God bless Texas! Yeah. Sam Houston said, Texas, Texas has yet to learn submission to any oppression, come from what source it may. And may his words, may his words inspire us all today, never ever, never to submit to Islamic barbarism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.